Here is what you missed this morning on the Catholic Morning Show. Well, and I'm already uh, I'm already pushing us here on time, so let's not delay any further. Maybe Father Mark wants to take a shot at Absale. Good morning, Father. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you guys? Oh, we're having a great time here. Thanks for joining us uh, to give us a look at uh, our, our Sunday gospel coming up here, the uh, Solemnity of the Most Holy Body blood and Blood of Christ, uh, Corpus, otherwise known as Corpus Christi. Uh, we, we have a gospel from Mark, which, uh, you know, we didn't, uh, we, we, we've heard this story not too long ago, back on Holy Thursday, but uh, uh, tell us a little bit about this this passage from Mark that we're going to be hearing. So the gospel we have for this coming Sunday, Corpus Christi, Body and Blood of Christ, starts with the preparation for the Passover, where Jesus has the disciples go into Jerusalem, find a place for the Passover meal, then it skips a little section where we hear about the the prediction or actual betrayal of Judas. And then we go to what we hear at Mass, the institutional narrative, where Jesus institutes the Eucharist, saying, this is my body, this is my blood. And for me, I'm fixed on kind of the the themes of blood and of covenant. Because you look at our first reading, it's from the Old Testament Mm -hmm. book of Exodus, where Moses sprinkles the blood on the altar, sprinkles the blood on the people, kind of establishing that covenant between God and the people. Uh, The second reading from the letter to the Hebrews, again, talks about this covenant, but a new covenant in Jesus. And then in the gospel itself, the Lord gives us himself as a covenant uh, with his own blood, higher than the blood, definitely higher than the blood of uh, the animals from the first covenant. And one thing I was thinking of uh, with respect to blood You've heard the phrase, maybe, blood brothers? Yeah. And, I I mean, maybe this is something, uh, a bad decision I've made in the past, but maybe you would... (laughs) um, I I know uh, exactly the imagery you're going with, because I was thinking, uh, I think, something similar. I'll let you finish, but, yeah. Well, I'm thinking, uh, I mean, so you have blood brothers, so I have a brother, a full brother, Mm -hmm. um, but also maybe you have a really good buddy, really tight relationship, and you can kind of form a pact... Um, probably the, the, in a way that's not the most healthy. Sure. But you can kind of mingle your blood. Uh, but it shows like you have this tight relationship, uh, a blood brother. And so I think I'm thinking of that sense of the Eucharist with the Lord, uh, forming that tight relationship with us as blood brothers, mm-hmm. or blood brother and sister, so to speak, when we receive his body and blood at Mass. So that's uh, an image that very much sticks with me. Right oh, I, I think that's uh, I think that's spot on, and and even uh, even more so. It's this is even bigger than that. You know the the the, the things we might have done in our childhood, and uh, uh, but it's interesting that it's almost it was in, in, in innate in our uh, uh, in our being to want to form those types of bonds with one another. And uh, you know, if you were somebody like me who wasn't necessarily rooted in Scripture as a child, to have this uh, this passage or this this portion, uh, this revelation from Christ in the Gospels, to to say, no, this is this is this is this is it in our nature to be in in communion with one another, and uh, he, he lays it out for us on how it's possible. Absolutely, and I think of uh, that term covenant as well. And I have this idea, for me, we talk a lot about, I'm doing a wedding this weekend. I think one of you guys mentioned uh, a wedding rehearsal yep, coming up. that's right. Um, when I think of covenant, I think of marriage. And uh, covenant is this change of life, this this new life that we have with a person when you enter into marriage. Uh, it needs to be kind of renewed daily, all the time. And that makes me also think of this covenant with the Lord, the Eucharist, something we can renew daily, all the time. But it's this change of life. Um, in the new life that needs to be strengthened uh, with blood, blood being a symbol of life. Because a question I've had, and I try to do some research, and maybe you have a thought, a take. Um, why is there? Why is blood needed for the sacrifice? Mm. And I don't know. And I'm and I'm wondering because it's this. I mean, there's a sense of atonement. Yeah. Uh, when we rupture something, when we destroy a life, we need to make up for it. We need to sacrifice something precious. Um, which nothing's more precious in life than blood. The Lord shows that by laying down his life for us, his great love for us. Um, so I'm wondering just that sense of a, a blood sacrifice, that sense of covenant that changes a life, and somehow trying to mix those two together. And I think I'm still thinking aloud, uh, kind of entering, trying to enter into the mystery 
yeah. of the scriptures for us this weekend, or the gospel at least. I, so it's a, a rich thought to to leave us all to ponder on because it is. Uh, uh, that, that's, I'm glad you mentioned that word mystery because the. Um, you know, one of the reflections we had last Friday was just, you know, just that is that, you know, there, there is a mystery to our faith that doesn't mean it, it can't be discovered. It can't be known. It just uh, hasn't been maybe fully revealed yet. But uh, uh, yeah, that imagery of blood, it's, it's you know, we, we say it's the ultimate sacrifice even in, in our earthly lives. But uh, but in the spiritual life, I think we we, we can see that same uh bonding nature right and, and life-giving nature that, that that blood has father would you uh are, are, are you have students still on campus there or uh, or things quieted down for the summer both we have <laughs> very few students in the area on campus compared definitely to uh the school year um but things well it, they're getting quieter yeah i should say or more quiet yeah does that does that mean you're going to give paul lee some uh, some time away or is uh, are you still uh, <laughs> make, making sure he's staying staying uh st- staying nose to the grindstone um i don't think that's in paul's nature to <laughs> get away I think uh, so, uh, <laughs> very good well love, would you would you leave us with your blessing as we uh as we enter into this uh into, into the weekend Absolutely. As we prepare to celebrate the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us always. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Mark Murphy, chaplain at St. Stephen, the Witness Students Center, as well as the Vocations Director in the Archdiocese at Dubuque. Thanks again for making time for us. Have a blessed weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Take care. Bye. Listen to the Catholic Morning Show weekday mornings at 7 on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, iowacatholicradio.com, or the Iowa Catholic Radio app.